I would like you to please open to Galatians, Galatians chapter 1, Galatians chapter 1, I'm actually going to, today's message is focused on verses 6 through 10, but I'm going to read again from verses 1 through 10. Galatians chapter 1. Like I said, you're going to be hearing me preach from Galatians for a while. Galatians chapter 1. Reading from the NIV. Paul, an apostle sent not from man, nor by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. I'm reading directly from the Greek, so it may sound a little bit different from what you have. Verse 2, and all the brothers with me To the churches in Galatia, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age according to the will of our God and Father to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you by the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel, which is really no gospel at all. Evidently, some people are throwing you into mental confusion and are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preached to you, let him be eternally condemned. As we have already said, so now I say again, If anybody is preaching to you a gospel other than what you accepted, let him be eternally condemned. Am I now trying to win the approval of men or of God? Or am I trying to please men? If I was still trying to please men, I will not be a servant of Christ. Amen. Before I go into this passage, if you're writing something down, I want you to also write down Romans chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. And when you get home, I will encourage you to read that passage. I will give you another passage that is really important for you to get. And that is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 11. If you have some time, especially those of you that are fasting with me, I would like you to read two very important books in the Bible. And if you take your time while you're fasting, it's not going to be very difficult to do. 
read the entire book of Romans and also the entire book of Hebrews. I heard one amen. Okay. So as we look at this passage, Galatians chapter 1, specifically verses 6 through 10, but let's say we look at verses 1 through 10, even though I have done verses 1 through 5 already. I'm, I'm going to be going back and forth. Okay. I want to title the message today, The True Gospel. The True Gospel. And I want us to think about it in three segments. I am one of those three-point preachers. I had a professor that said, uh, it's not important for you to have three points, just have a point. I want us to look at it in three. First, I want to talk about the characteristics of the true gospel. It's not going to take long. The second thing is, I want us to look at the content of today's gospel. I want us to look at today's gospel and look at it. And then ask, us, ask ourselves the question, is today's gospel authentic? Or is it synthetic? Is it authentic? Is it the real thing? Or is it synthetic? Is it made up? Is it made up by us, made up by the church? And then I want us to ask the question, maybe another deeper question. Is our gospel commercialism or political posturing? Have I confused you yet? Is it political posturing? Uh, are we doing this just for political stance? Because we belong to a particular camp. I, I'll talk more about it later. Okay, Linda? Okay. The last point that I want us to look at is, number three is the content of the true gospel. What is the content of the true gospel? We'll, we've looked at the characteristics of the gospel, of the true gospel. We've looked at the question of whether today's gospel is actually a real gospel or not. If it is not real, why is it not real? We want to look at it. Okay? Uh, so it's really important for us to look at this. Paul said, I'm preaching the gospel. And it's written to these Galatians. And in fact, the book of Galatians is one of the books of Paul that he started it in a very weird way. It's not his usual peace to you and grace from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He, he didn't, you know, he didn't start the gospel like that. First, he started by letting them know, I am an apostle. And I am an apostle not because somebody called me, but because God himself called me. So what I'm telling you, I'm telling you out of the authority because I am standing in place of God to speak to you. That is what evangelical scholars call the revelatory stands. In other words, Paul is saying, I will not tell you what I'm telling you if God did not tell me. I am not writing you what I'm writing you because I just want to write. It's because God has sent me to write it to you. So what is the characteristic of the true gospel? We know from what Paul is saying that the true gospel is never from man.
If you think the only reason why you're preaching the gospel is because some church gave you a license, then you are deeply mistaken. If you think the reason why you're preaching the gospel is because a church or a denomination ordained you and gave you a paper, then you are deeply mistaken. If you think the reason why you're preaching the gospel is because you've been to college and you've been to seminary and you have your master of divinity or you have your uh, uh, master of theology or you have your PhD in theology, you are deeply mistaken. Man can give you any papers they want. It does not qualify you as a preacher of the gospel. Amen. I'm going to say it loud enough so you all hear me. Amen. I am not knocking down schools. I went to several of them. I am not knocking down theological degrees. I have many of them. I am not knocking down the discipline to study the Bible in Greek and Hebrew. I am not knocking them. But it doesn't matter how much Greek you know, how much Hebrew you know, you may even study Aramaic. That is not what gives you the authority to preach the gospel. That's why we have a lot of nonsense that's going on in the church today. Too many people graduating from seminaries. And some of the seminaries are no longer seminary, but they're cemeteries. And some, some of those seminaries, you better be careful going there because if you have faith, you go there, they will kill your faith. Paul said, I am not preaching this because somebody called me. The gospel is never from man. And if it is the true gospel of Jesus Christ, it is never man-centered. Read Paul again, Galatians chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. He made it very clear. Sometimes the reason why many of us preach the wrong gospel is because we just put men in the center of it. If you're going to praise the gospel, don't offend man. Work it out so that you can speak to everybody. You don't want to offend anybody. Amen. And there are many churches today with Thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people that are listening to somebody that doesn't even preach the gospel. Paul said the gospel, if it's going to be a gospel at all, must be by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. Did you hear? The gospel is not possibility thinking. Amen. You didn't come here today because you want some psychological massage. Oh, you're in the wrong place. This is where we preach the unadulterated gospel of Jesus the Christ. The true gospel. The true gospel, if it is not Jesus-centered, it is no gospel at all. 
Are you going to be with me this morning? Amen. Because if I think you're not with me, I'm going to keep going. I have nothing to do until I go to Africa. (laughs) We're going to be here all day. And just like we've stolen Jesus out of Christmas, many churches have stolen Jesus out of the gospel. Amen. You go to Kmart today, you won't even know we're celebrating Jesus on Christmas. It's really amazing to me that we are allowing the atheists to to control everything we do now. Hello, idiot. That's why we call it Christmas. It's about Christ. If you don't want to celebrate it, don't celebrate it. Nobody is forcing you. It's about Jesus. Now they're forcing us, don't, don't say Merry Christmas. You're offending me. And it's amazing, many of us are, we are allowing the world to squeeze us into their mold. And we buy into that nonsense. Amen. Amen. It's like you coming by my house on July 4th say, I'm offended by you doing fireworks on the 4th of July. <laughs> the true gospel of Jesus Christ, Paul is saying this, and I want to say it loud and clear. The true gospel is about Jesus. He is alive. It's about Jesus. He died for you. It's about Jesus. It's not about you. Amen. You see a preacher talking to people on a Sunday morning. I am who I am. I'm created by God. I am good. I am fine. I am the best thing going on in the world. I'm better than apple pie. I'm now that leads me into today's gospel. Many of us are crying about today's gospel. Get get this right. If it is the gospel, and the gospel, the word gospel, comes from euangelion, it means good news, and the word gospel is never applied to man. It's always about what God has done. Gospel. Good news. What is the good news? That Jesus died so you won't have to die. That Jesus paid the price so you won't have to pay the price. That is the gospel. Do we have the video ready? We're going to play a two-minute video real quick, and then I'll come back to my point. Some of the criticism is that you're pre- preaching prosperity. I was reading some of the c- critics, and I was thinking, well, why would, you, why would anybody criticize you for preaching prosperity? Because yeah. what kind of God wants you to be poor and miserable? That's the way I feel as well. I mean, I don't know who would say, you know, that you're not supposed to, you know, leave your children better than you were before. And plus, Oprah, prospering is not just you know, material things. It, it's peace in your mind and health in your body and things like that. And so there's, a, you know, a belief that you're supposed to suffer more and be 
poor and to show your humility. I just, I don't see the Bible that way. I see that God came to, you know, Jesus died that we might live an abundant life and to be a blessing to others. I can't be a big blessing to people if I'm poor and broke and depressed and I don't feel good about myself. If you're poor, broke, and depressed, is that because you're not praying enough or you're not, uh, or you're, something you said today, it was really great about getting with God. And it's what I, I often say this same of trying to be aligned with what God yeah. wants for you. Do you think that if you're poor and broke and depressed, it's because you're not praying enough or not in alignment? No, I think it's, um, I think it's a mixture of things. I don't think it's just not praying enough because there's some great people that are just, you know, haven't broken through in that area. And I think that, you know, there are forces trying to hold us all down. And a lot of people haven't been trained and they haven't been inspired that, hey, you know what, you're in the projects, but you don't have to stay there. God's got a plan for your life and you believe and you mm -hmm. pray and you do everything you can. So I think a lot of it is just, we just accept this. This is the way my family's always been. Mm -hmm. We're always broke, we're always defeated, we're always, but you know what? Somebody can rise out of it. You did, Tyler mm -hmm. did. I mean, you look at that. Mm -hmm. When you, in the beginning, were first being criticized by people who were more fundamentalists, who sure. were more orthodox, more strict in their beliefs, that there's not enough doctrine, yeah. there's not enough um, Christ yeah. in the message. Sure. Well, you know, again, Oprah, I try to get up every morning and just search my own heart and say, God, am I doing what you want me to do? And I feel like if I can be pure and feel good before God that I, I don't have to, you know, I always want to listen to people and receive good criticism, but I just feel like I don't have to answer them. I have to answer to God. And so I just try to stay focused on what God's called me to do. You know what's interesting? After Mother Teresa died, and Mother Teresa is the iconic figure for giving and love and peace and faith in the world, and after she died, we found out that even she had moments where she doubted her faith. Have you ever doubted or questioned your faith? You know, I don't want to sound super spiritual, but I don't really believe I have. I just... Um, I grew up in this, and I, you know, even in the difficult times... So you have never doubted? I really haven't. I don't, I don't, I don't so you, say, you walk the walk, you just don't talk it? Well, I, I believe I do, and I don't, I don't want to, I just, I never have. I, I don't, I just, I wouldn't go that route if something happens. It's more, more of turning to my faith, and God, we need your help in these times. And so it, it hadn't been like that. Do you know now it's sin to be poor? Maybe you didn't get it. Now, I don't want to discount anything. There are many great preachers today who preach the true gospel. I'm going to be slow intentionally because I don't want anybody to misunderstand me. I have some great people that if I am in my car and they're preaching, I will hold the station to that station and listen to them for as long as they're preaching. One of them is Charles Stanley. One of them is Chuck Swindoll. John Piper. Tony Evans. Have you ever heard of Tony Evans? an amazing teacher and preacher of the word. And there are many more that, that, that I cannot mention to you right now, but there are so many false preachers of the gospel. Let me say, so-called preachers of the gospel. And unfortunately, people like Oprah are parading them as representative of evangelical preachers. We are in a deep mess if Oprah has to define for us what the gospel is. You're in a terrible fix. If your definition of gospel comes from Oprah,
And the worst of the worst is Joel Osteen. And I know many of you follow him. Because you don't get enough positive, positive preaching from Village Baptist Church. You got to have somebody massage your soul. You are the best thing since sliced bread. Amen. You're beautiful. I mean, can you imagine somebody trying to convince me that I'm tall? Emmanuel, don't worry. You're the tallest thing. Amazing. And, and Joel Osteen is not by himself. You have Joyce Myers, T.D. Jakes, Creflo Dollar, Mike Murdoch. I, I love Mike Murdoch. He wants you to sow seeds every week. And he tells you too what he's doing with your seed. I mean, it's amazing, Annette, that in today's Christianity, there are a lot of preachers who come and people won't give to Village Baptist Church, but they will listen to Mike Murdoch tell them he just bought his first plane that's over $65 million and is getting ready to buy the next one. And he tells his audience, I know you're all jealous. Yes. They'll take it from him, but, you know, they come to Village Baptist Church. I tell them Jesus is Lord, and they say, you left out the Muslims. I'm not preaching about Muslims. It's, it's amazing. The, the, the word of faith, you know, these people who preach this garbage, Tell you your words can change everything. That's all you need. Word of faith. Amen. Tell yourself before you go into West America Bank. <laughs> I own every dollar in this bank. I own every dollar in this bank. In the name of Jesus, you will come out in handcuffs. What about Kenneth Copeland? You should just look into the eye of this man. Like he's the devil from hell. And Benny Hinn, I don't know when he's ever going to get tired of wearing white. And they have absolutely nothing to talk about Jesus. It's all about wealth and health. How come we bought into this garbage that if you're sick, it's because God is not favoring you? They would sometimes think Jesus was a fool. Because he suffered. You're not supposed to suffer. Paul was a fool because he suffered. He was in and out of jail. He didn't have the power of God to put him out of jail. You know, Paul was a tent maker. And we buy that nonsense. Benny Hinn. And we have another one called Carlton Pearson. Now, he, he's come out, he said, uh, there's no hell. There's no evil. There's no sin. It's laissez-faire. And there's a church here in San Francisco that invited him to come preach. They're celebrating him.
We're talking about the gospel, right? Let, let me give you uh, things that we need to look out for. And then I'll, I'll stop right there. I'll continue later. What, what, does, what captures true gospel? And what captures untrue gospel? Most of the preachers that I have mentioned that are preaching the theology of me and me and me and my pocketbook and my bank account is because of these theological blunders. Number one, they are so ignorant about the Bible. No solid biblical interpretation just surface biblical interpretation. There's no way that you can read the Bible and come up with that garbage. And I'm not saying you have to know Hebrew and Greek, even though I encourage you to, but it's ridiculous some of the things you hear these preachers preach. Any preaching that is not Jesus centered in the church of Jesus Christ is the wrong gospel. Whether you believe it or not, it is true. And some of you are not saying amen. Any time that Jesus is not the only way and the only person you need in your life to be full and complete, it is the wrong gospel. Amen. You don't have to feel good to be good with God. You don't have to have money to be good with God. You don't have to be healthy to be good with God. It's really amazing. A theology that is based on wealth and health is a false theology. False. Come on to me, not all ye that are wealthy and healthy. Come on to me, all ye that labor and are what? Heavy laden. Amen. Uh, uh, will you allow me just to preach a little bit? Any pastor that tells you that because you're depressed, because you have some problems, you are not a child of God, is a stupid pastor. We live in this world, we are going to be faced by the things of this world. But thank God Almighty that we serve a risen Savior who is in the world today. Don't let anybody define you by your state of health. Don't let anybody define you by how much money you have in the bank. Don't let anybody define you by how much money you give to the church. It's not about your money. Amen. Frida wrote a song. I can't say it exactly like you say. Here comes the million dollar man flashing a hundred dollar bill. Was that what it was? Something like that. Okay. I want to get in heaven. And God said, you perish with your hundred dollar bill. You don't come in here because you have money. You come in here because Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin left a crimson stain, but he washed it white as snow.
And I don't want to go too deep into that. But let's, number four, it is a theology that has lost the biblical understanding and demand of repentance. Okay, if it's going to be a gospel, it's got to involve repentance. You don't, if you go to Joel Osteen, you don't have to repent about anything. Just convince yourself of who you are, even when you're lying to yourself. I'm the best thing since tomatoes. <laughs> and, and I have to tell you, let me get to, I'll get to Nigeria later on. But a lot of, a lot of this wrong theology has permeated Africa. And Nigeria is the chief of sinners. When it comes to this type of preaching, too many people in Nigerian churches are on their way sliding to hell, jumping, singing, dancing, but have no relationship with Jesus Christ. Now let's come back to America. Many times, our practice of Christianity is cultural. Has nothing to do with the Bible. When was the last time you heard somebody say America is a, is a Christian country? You know somebody's been lying to you? When they call America a Christian country, you may call America a deist country. The founding fathers were not Christian, they were deists. Believing in God does not make you a Christian because the devil believes in God. And the Bible says he not only believes in God, but he trembles. The founding fathers, no, they, they, didn't, they didn't believe in Jesus Christ the only way. You look at your bill. Look at your dollar bill. It's just the mason sign uh, with a big eye in the middle. You, you think that was designed by Christians? I have nothing against the dollar. <laughs> I, I have some in my pocket. <laughs> Amen. Just saying in God you trust doesn't make you a Christian. The devil trusts in God. When we look at some of these preachers, some of these teachers, we see some evangelical theology. And I'm going to get a little bit political here. Please don't forgive me. I'm doing it for effect. I'm doing it because I want to preach the truth to you. Okay? I'm not trying to be a, a Republican or trying to be a Democrat or trying to be independent. No, a lot of people say they're independent. I think they're lying. Some evangelical theology is more influenced by politics than by religion or historical Christianity. I'm teaching you now. Nobody's going to tell you this. Because a lot of preachers are too afraid to speak the truth. How can you, how can you, Say, Obama wasn't a Christian, and you stand behind Donald Trump and say he is a Christian. I'm talking about American cultural Christianity. 
When have you ever heard Obama saying he was grabbing women's thing? That, that, is a, that is your president. And he stands there, I'm, I'm the best Christian. He's the best of everything, by the way. And you have all these evangelical pastors. We're standing with him. It's politics because we're standing with him because he agrees with what we agree on when it comes to abortion. Because that's the only good thing he believes. That we shouldn't be killing children, which is the sin of America. Every opportunity we get, we want to kill children before they're born. That's why all these evangelical preachers are running after Donald Trump, who has the worst mouth president ever. I told you I was going to be a little bit political. You just have to forgive me. But I have to tell you the truth. I have to preach the truth to you. How can you say you're the best Christian and be a racist? Some of you probably won't come back next week. That's all right. That's historical. Christianity stands for something. I learned something about American pastors and preachers. They are chickens. Cowards. You remember the second time, the first time that Obama ran, he ran against uh, John McCain. The second time, he ran against Mitt Romney. Mitt Romney was an avowed moment. In other words, evangelical preachers, Mitt Romney believes that Jesus is the brother of Lucifer. Even Billy Graham, who has been one of my heroes of preaching for a long time, went to his website. He used to have Mormons as cults. But during that election, he changed it. Cultural Christianity. You can fall for anyone. You can never stand for Christ. Evangelical, it, it, it is a, a theology that is devoid of suffering. It's no Christian theology. Can I say something really important? Why are we always trying to avoid suffering? That's not Christianity. The Bible said if we suffer for him, we shall live with him. We shall reign with him. Peter said if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed. But under that name, let him glorify God. When is it that we have come to the conclusion that a Christian must not suffer? We have a theology that is being proposed by all these men and women that I, have, yeah, that I have mentioned. This theology is works. Theology of works. I 
And sometimes it's in, even in the evangelical church, even in our church here at Village Baptist Church, where we define people by what they have done. Titus 3, 5 says, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to what? His mercy. He saved us by the washing of regeneration and the what? Renewal by the Holy Spirit. That is the gospel. If you try to be a Christian by what you do, how much of what you do will really qualify you to be saved? Thank God. I don't have to worry like you. I just put it on Jesus. Because the Bible says, for by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is what? The gift of God. There's nothing about salvation that I have that I deserve. It's simply a gift. That's why I can understand people sowing the seed. Sowing the seed. It's like you sow this seed and you sow more seeds and God will just keep blessing you as you sow seeds into it and everything. There are people in the world who are not even Christian. God is blessing them. Yes. Yes. What is your problem? Oh God. God is not blessing you just because of what you have done. He's blessing you because you're obedient to him. Yes. Not to some preacher. I have about five, seven more minutes. And some of these preachers forget what the content of the gospel ought to be. What is the content of the true gospel? Let, let me say first and foremost that a theology that is based simply on the Old Testament alone is a false theology. That can never be the true gospel. Are you with me? The theology of God blessing you is based on the covenant with Abraham and this is the reason why God gave us the new covenant. Read the book of Hebrews. Read the book of Hebrews. Why don't you just go ahead and just be a Jew? You don't need Jesus. If the Old Testament answers your question, go to the Jewish tabernacle. I will recommend some good Jewish congregations to you. There's one in Marin County. Congregation Rodesh Shalom. They don't think they're sinners. Go join them. I'm not talking about what somebody told me. I actually preached there and they approached me. What are you calling us sinners? Because your Bible says you are. <laughs> the rabbi got in trouble for inviting me. He just wanted to be nice to me on Martin Luther King Day. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and got in trouble. Yeah. Now, mind you, I preached from the Old Testament. I read from the original Hebrew. I still got the rabbi in trouble. Let me use my five minutes well. If the Old Testament is sufficient for you, why do you think God wasted his time giving you the New Testament? Read the book of Hebrews. It will answer your question for you.
this thing is, are you still picking me up? Oh, okay, good. I'm terrible with keeping all these mechanical devices. More than a century ago, speaking to the then largest congregation in the Christian world, Charles Spurgeon said this, I believe that it is anti-Christian and unholy for any Christian to live with the object of accumulating wealth. You will say, he continues, are we not to strive all we can to get all the money we can? You may do so. I cannot doubt but what in so doing you may do that you may do service in the cause of God. But what I said was that to live with the object of accumulating wealth is anti-Christian. Did you get the point? We live in a society that the thinking of the society has captured the way we think. Amen? Some of you will work 10, 20 hours a week just to earn money. Amen? Amen? If I take longer than five minutes preaching, you'll be all upset. Amen? Some of you can't even stand two, two hour services anymore. You come in anytime you want, and you leave anytime you want. But then you go to work, you stay even when they kick you out. I wish I had time. And then we say, oh, I'm the best Christian. We're all just like Donald Trump. I'm the best Christian. The message that is being preached in today's church is another gospel. Some of the largest churches in the world, we are saying, name it and claim it, blab it and grab it, health and wealth, prosperity gospel, positive confession theology. That's all it's going on in our churches today. No matter the name you use, Simply put, what is going on today is not the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is what, I don't know, you all, do you all know Robert Tilton? You don't know Robert Tilton? That tells me your age. But... Uh, Robert Tilton used to be the criest, prayest minister ever on TV. And speaks in tongue at a moment notice. Shabuko Hotili. Now, li listen to what Robert Tilton said. I believe that it is the will of God for all to prosper because I see it in the word, not because it has worked mightily for someone else. I do not put my eyes on men, but on God who gives me the power to get wealth. And Robert Tilton will tell you, send in those prayers. Sending those prayers, I'm praying for you. And, they, and immediate, as they come in, they haul them all and put them in the garbage. Uh -huh. It's really amazing what they do. Robert Tilton was followed by ABC, and they got 
They've given him over $300 every time he tells them to, you send a dollar bill and say, return that dollar bill to me with more money in it to, so I can pray for you for this and for that. And they'll send it to him. He'll send another thing to them. You send it back to me. I'll give you this, give you that. Same thing, shamefully, is happening in Nigeria. People don't go to church because they want to worship God and they want to praise him. They go to church because they want a baby. They've been barren for so long. They want money. They want to be rich. And 99% of the people there are still poor for the past 20 years. And they're still going. Not to worship God, not to praise him, not to glorify him, but to get something from him. I don't want you, I just want your hand. It is so bad that a South African pastor said, I'm going to be praying for you. Just send me money. Send me dollars. Send me rain. Send me, send me yen. But please don't send me naira. I don't want Nigerian naira. They are useless. Please, the message that I'm trying to preach to you today is the gospel is about Jesus. The gospel is about what Jesus has already done for you. You just need to accept it. All we like sheep have gone astray, but the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. If thou shalt confess with your mouth that Jesus is God, is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, and you give some money, you will be saved. That's not the gospel. Amen. If you're not well, if you're sick, Go to God. He said, if you pray to me, I will deal with your situation. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Amen. If you're looking for a husband, amen, give it to the Lord. Give it to the Lord. Many have just given it to a man. And you find yourself in trouble. I'm serious. I've seen it over and over and over and over and over again. You think you have problems? Give it to the Lord. Don't give it to a man. Don't give it to a woman. Those are called fringe benefits. Yeah. Amen. You get some benefits because you are a Christian. You can take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there. Don't try begin to find another way to, to mess it up yourself because that's all you're going to do. Mess it up. Amen. Let me shut up. The true gospel. Is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. My evangelism students, how do we say the true gospel? I'm going to preach on it next time. But it is what? What comes first? God. What comes second? Man. What comes third? Jesus. What comes next? Accept. We'll talk about that. Let us pray.